Hello, and welcome to another Learning by Doing, brought to you by Data Talks. Uh, today, we're going to be going through another pandas exercise, this time on time series, and you get to watch a real data scientist do this exercise. Oh, boy. Um, so you get to watch sort of how I unpack it, see if I sort of uh, fumble in any way. Uh, I used to do this with my students where we'd go through exercises together and we can't necessarily do that unless we want to go live stream data science. Um, so I figured just doing this type of thing would be really helpful. Uh, I originally just made these things just so my students could, who missed the class could go ahead and check these out. Um, so with no further ado, let's get started and dive into some pandas time series analysis. Um, because we're doing pandas, uh, we're probably going to want to import pandas uh, as PD. Um, so this is an Apple stock one. I know it's time series because it's part of the Grip Samora Pandas exercises library. Um, and this library goes ahead and contains lots of little goodies uh, in terms of where you want to find, oh, like doing, uh, creating data frames, deleting, selecting, indexing, lots and lots of stuff. Um, okay, so we just checked. Our data is in a nice format. It is in a CSV format. No need to do anything special here. Uh, so we just do this here uh, and then we can just do pandas, I uh, guess, pd.read uh, csv. Go ahead and read it in, even from a URL. Um, this will be our df. Great. Um, so lots of good stuff in here. I'll link the, uh, the all the exercises in the description below. So apple equals df, and let's check out apple um, dot head. Cool. Uh, so we've just got sort of stock stuff, uh, which we are all sort of uh, familiar with, I'm sure. Uh, this is actually one of like the common, you know, if I've done, uh, I've taught data science a couple of times and we do capstone projects, which is a final project. Um, this is actually one of the common types of final projects that people do. Um, it's always like one of those things that's very interesting. You know, people go ahead and make a lot of money uh, trying to predict where stocks are going to be the next day um, and whether you can do it too and stuff like that seems pretty cool too. Um, so we check a lot of this stuff. Maybe the one thing that's surprising to you is that the date is an object. Um, so this date is an object thing is because it's a string. Uh, it's not actually a date time. Um, you can make it a date time directly from the uh, pandas read CSV. So for example, there is, I believe, a date call or something down here. Um, it's just one of these date parser. It's just one of these uh, pandas read CSV is just one of these functions that has just more... <laughs> it has parameters, look at all these parameters, you can keep going more and more and more. Um, so it is useful, I've not really spent a lot of time memorizing what these parameters are, but sometimes if I want to go ahead and make it in one line, it's good. Uh, transform the date time column, in, or the date column into date time format, perfect. So we can do this really easy with pd dot to date time. Um, the nice thing about this, so there's a couple of things we could do here first. Uh, we could go ahead and just put in the format, um, but I believe there's an infer daytime format here, and I believe I'm not gonna I'm not gonna 100%, but I believe it can infer this format since the format is pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory. So true, um, and then let's go ahead and pass in the apple date. Apple dot date. Okay, so let's see if it's able to infer this. Okay, it looks like it was able to infer it pretty well. So. 2014, 07, 08, 2014, 07, 08, perfect. Um, so let's just do these two steps in uh, in two ways. So let's transform the date column. So, well, you know what, I've done this sort of skipping ahead thing. Don't, don't skip ahead because they're often a little bit tricky about, not tricky, but they often expect you to do these steps in a specific order. Um, okay, so let's reassign this. So Apple, um, date. I don't really ever like reassigning just because I lose what the original data frame looks like uh, and it can kind of mess you up later on, but I did it here. Um, so we can do Apple mostly because it asked me to. So uh, set index. Um, in this case, we can just make this the date. Uh, great. And we can see what this looks like. It looks pretty cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this in place. Uh, now that we saw what it looks like, Great. Um, are there any duplicate dates? That, that is an excellent question. Uh, we probably should have done that before we set it as the index. Uh, let's look at the head just for a quick look. Oh, okay. Um, 
kind of interesting. It's not exactly in order. There's certainly some missing dates here. Um, what we can do is, you'll notice we can actually access the index, and it's an array. Um, and we can go ahead and maybe do an in unique. So a number of unique. So this is 8465, okay? So 8465, um, and then 8465 unique. So it doesn't look like there's any duplicate dates. Um, oops, it seems that the index is the most recent date. Make the first entry the oldest date. Okay, great. So we can just do apple.sort index, I believe. Let's, let's throw this all the way down here. Um, so sort labels or sort uh, by labels along an axis. It's kind of funky that you can actually sort along the column with this. Um, so let's go ahead and make sure that this is true. Let's try this. So apple sort index um, axis equals index, of course. Um, let's see what happens here. Um, okay, so this goes all the way from the uh, most uh, no, no, it goes from the oldest state to the newest state now. So that's perfect. Um, so we can do this in place. Uh, in place, uh, true, now that we sort of saw what it looks like. So you can kind of see a little bit of a pattern of what I do. Get the last business day of each month. Okay. Um, dot, okay, okay. Uh, index dot, uh, let's check this out. So there's a lot of these functions. So we've got day of the week, days in month, um, day. So we've got a lot of these types of things. We want to get the last business day. Um, so these, because it's a date time, it's got a lot of interesting little things that you can do about it. Um, for example, you can figure out if it's a leap year. Um, is month start, is quarter start, is year end, um, month name, quarter. So you'll see, unfortunately, all of this is kind of like in the global namespace of this. I wish they kind of put these things into a, um, into a, um, a, like a DT, you know, into a sub namespace, just so I can know what's all, what all is the um, period delta transpose, okay weekday weekday so okay let's see here um let's see so let's go through this one more time and i've got an idea we might need to just do some resampling um to go ahead and figure this out um slice and a's Boots. Again, at this point, you know, to be frank, I might actually start to just Google this because this is something that's very simple, right? Um, I'm not sort of the time series data science expert, so I'm kind of like, oh, let's Google. Um, let's go ahead and see. Maybe month, month name. Okay. So let's try to, let's see if resample, go ahead. The last business day. What's the... So here's the thing. We could do, um, oh, these are all business days. Right. Okay, so, right. Silly me. So if you look at our data, um, so if you do Apple head uh, 30, uh, you'll notice it misses some days here. 12 to 15, uh, 19 to 22. It's because stocks are only listed on business days. Okay, so this is pretty easy. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go, so because we've already got the business day part of it, this was sort of the hard part, uh, we can do something called resample. Um, resample is super easy. It's kind of like a group by for time series stuff. Um, we can go ahead and check this out. Um, so the rule, the rule is basically the way that we can, let's pop this down here. Uh, so the rule is basically the way that we can um, go ahead and resample. And so we want to resample each month. Um, and then the how, in this case, I believe it's a string for how we do it. Mean is the normal way. This is deprecated. So this was the old way. Um, 
So now that we've resampled per month, we want to get the uh, last. Uh, I believe this will work. Let's check this out. So, so notice here, yep, uh, the 31st, 28th, 31st, 30. So sweet. Um, okay, so this hopefully should be great. Um, so this gives us the data for the last business day each month. Um, I would love to check out, well, it's good enough. So, uh, last business. So last business day uh, per month. Okay. And I can just call this last business day, LBD. Um, what's the difference in days between the first day and the oldest? So let's go ahead and grab the first day, um, right? Uh, of course, because we no longer have indexes, we need to use uh, dot .ilock. Um, okay, let's just grab this from the actual index. Uh, Apple.index um, zero. This will be the first day. Let's actually check out, just here we go. This will be the last day. So it's pretty simple. Um, it's a lot of days. Wow. Um, well, right. It's from 1980 to 2014. Uh, so it's, what is it? It's 12,000 days. Uh, how many months of data do we have? Um, so this will be, so there's a couple ways to do it. We could get this resampled thing and we could just count, um, right? Uh, dot shape. So 404. Um, we could also take this time delta and convert it into months. Uh, plot the uh, ADJ close value and set the figure size to this. Okay, so we want to plot this. Um, so let's go ahead and do uh, PD dot. Um, uh, what is this thing called? I see. Okay, so we can't actually use this dot notation, unfortunate, but that's what you get. Um, and then let's go ahead and plot it. Ah, uh, Pete. <laughs> uh, 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 the fool. Um, okay. Wow. Ooh, ooh, it's been doing great. Uh, boy, look at the value creation. Um, and set the figure size to uh, 3.59. Oh, God. Uh, let's see, import, uh, mat plot lib dot pi plot. Again, this is one of those things that, um, oh boy, just use Seaborn is my suggestion. And if you want to learn how to do plotting with Python, check out my Seaborn series. It's actually really nice. Um, if you want to do like the super advanced stuff and get into the nitty gritty, um, not my, not my cup of tea, um, so maybe it's set fig size, fig, figure size. I don't know. I'm not even getting autocomplete. Ugh. PLT dot. Um, oh, 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 here we go. Um, so, oh boy. Um, maybe it's fig size, figure size, figure asp legend set figure size. Oh. Um, let's see, set log, oh, that's not what's well, definitely not that. Uh, <laughs> I could just Google this. This is honestly, every time I have to do a matplotlib thing, I just Google it. Um, uh, xlim, ylim, I don't know. Uh, fig size, fig aspect, figure, maybe just figure, figure dot something. I, it's just, we're, we're going to ignore that part. We'll, we'll check it out in the solutions. Um, otherwise, I would just Google it. So it's kind of like doing the same thing. Okay, so I hope this was kind of a little bit useful. Kind of see someone working with time series data, get to see what the high-level functions that you generally use are. Uh, so knowing about time deltas, knowing about this resample um, can all be really useful. And then note that, you know, it's really awesome when you go ahead and you plot this out here. Um, the, if you've got an index that's already a date, the plot will actually start to look nice. Uh, so we'll actually do this for you. So let's check out the solutions, see if I did anything wrong, which I'm sure I did. Um, so Apple stock exercises with solutions. Let's go into it. Okay. 
So yep, they import all this good stuff. Um, do this all, great. They'd use D types instead of info, totally fine. They use, yep, uh, to date time, great. Um, they set the index, perfect. Um, okay, they also just do is unique, perfect. Um, I did not, um, no, all are unique. So I did, I did not know that that's sort of a, a, a thing you could do on an index, this is really nice. Um, they sort the index as ending true, um, cool. Uh, get the, okay, ah, yes. So this is, this is, you can resample on business day month. So again, this is just one of those things that um, if, you're, if you're trying to get the last business day of each month, um, so for example, 27, so it's a little bit different. So if you're trying to get that type of thing, just either Google it or just know these functions. So for example, resample is the function that you need to go ahead and do this group by data frame thing. Um, and they've got so many options in here uh, that are really useful that you just aren't gonna know off the top of your head that just check it out. Um, so when you're not under sort of time pressure and artificially sort of being you know filmed, uh, it can be much easier to do that. Um, okay, yep, so they did that as well, great. Um, how many months of data? Perfect. Um, plot this. Okay, fig dot set size inches. Um, okay, cool. Okay, this is really nice. So I, I love this uh, solution set. This was really elegant, really nice, really succinct. So definitely a really good one. Um, I've definitely seen some that are a little bit messy. Um, so awesome. If you like this video, go ahead, leave a big thumbs up, uh, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.